SpaceX just revealed why they're sacrificing a $63 million booster in Flight 10, and it shocked their own engineers. They're deliberately crashing a brand new rocket instead of catching it, even though they've nailed two perfect catches. The reason? It's not what anyone expected. What data is so critical that it's worth throwing away $63 million? Let's dive right in. Here's what happened that shocked SpaceX's own engineering team. During Flight 9, they weren't just testing another booster landing. They were pushing booster 14 to its absolute limits with something called a steeper angle of attack. Imagine a skydiver changing position mid-fall to control speed, except this skydiver weighs 3,000 tons and is traveling at Mach 3. The plan was genius. Use more air resistance, burn less fuel, save money. Simple physics, right? Wrong. At six minutes into flight, with 12 of 13 Raptor engines blazing at 4,351 pounds per square inch of chamber pressure, Booster 14 simply vanished. Contact lost. No warning. No goodbye. Just gone. But here's where it gets crazy. That failed Flight 9 test was supposed to unlock the secret to Mars colonization. You see, when Starship lands on Mars, there's no Mechazilla tower waiting. No ground crew. Just thin Martian atmosphere and whatever fuel you have left. Every single drop of fuel saved during landing becomes fuel for the return trip home. SpaceX engineers had spent months calculating the perfect angle. Too shallow? You waste precious fuel. Too steep? The aerodynamic forces literally tear your rocket apart. Flight 9 was supposed to find that sweet spot where physics meets survival. Instead, they got an explosion. This is where SpaceX's decision becomes absolutely insane, or absolutely brilliant. They're taking a brand new $63 million booster, equipped with 33 pristine Raptor engines worth over $30 million alone, and deliberately crashing it into the Gulf of Mexico. But wait, these aren't just any engines. Booster 16 is powered by Raptor 3 engines, the most advanced rocket engines ever built. Each one can produce 560,000 pounds of thrust while operating at temperatures hot enough to melt copper. We're talking about engines so advanced that when SpaceX first showed them to the world, industry experts thought they were fake. So why sacrifice perfection? Here's what makes a sacrifice brilliant. Raptor 3 engines are completely different beasts from their predecessors. Remember those flying spaghetti monster engines from early Starship flights? Those things look like bird's nests of cables and pipes. Raptor 3? It looks like someone stripped away everything unnecessary and left only the essential core. But here's the shocking part. It's not missing components. Those cables and pipes are still there. They're just integrated inside the engine using 3D printing technology so advanced that SpaceX claims it's the most sophisticated metal printing in the world. This means Raptor 3 can handle extreme conditions that would destroy older engines. The steeper angle attack test that killed Booster 14? Raptor 3 might actually survive it. Now here's what SpaceX hasn't told anyone, and what their engineers are buzzing about. Flight 10 isn't just about testing steep angles. It's about testing something called aerodynamic flutter, the point where airflow over the booster becomes so violent it causes structural vibration. Think of it like this. You know how a flag flaps in the wind? Now imagine that flag is made of steel and weighs 200 tons. When Booster 16 hits the atmosphere at the exact angle SpaceX wants to test, the entire vehicle will experience forces that could literally shake it apart. The sensors on Booster 16 will record every vibration, every stress point, every moment where the structure flexes. This data is impossible to simulate on Earth. You can't recreate 3,000 miles per hour atmospheric entry in a wind tunnel. But here's where this gets really wild. The steeper angle technique isn't just about saving fuel, it's about precision landing. When NASA's Artemis III astronauts need to land on the moon in 2027, they'll need to hit their target within meters, not kilometers. The data from Booster 16's sacrifice will directly influence how the human landing system touches down on lunar surface. Every stress measurement, every aerodynamic calculation, every moment of controlled chaos will feed into the computers that guide American astronauts to their first steps on the moon in over 50 years. And here's the kicker. China is watching. 
They're developing their own lunar landing systems, and they don't have access to SpaceX's Raptor 3 technology. This $63 million test might determine which country dominates lunar exploration for the next century. Remember how I mentioned SpaceX engineers were shocked? Here's why. The Flight 10's sacrifice also tests something SpaceX has never publicly discussed, emergency landing protocols. Right now, if Mechazilla fails during a catch attempt, the entire mission fails. But what if Booster 16's ocean impact data reveals that super heavy boosters can actually survive controlled crashes? What if SpaceX could design emergency landing legs that deploy only when the tower isn't available? The structural stress data from Flight 10's water impact will show exactly how much punishment a booster can take. Even though it's hitting ocean instead of land, the forces are similar enough to design emergency systems that could save billions in hardware. Here's something that'll blow your mind. During Flight 10's steep angle test, the leading edges of Booster 16 will experience temperatures approaching 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt aluminum. The only reason the booster won't disintegrate is because of SpaceX's secret cooling system integrated throughout Raptor 3. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen, both at minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit, flow through tiny channels carved into every external surface. It's like the booster is actively cooling itself while being roasted by atmospheric friction. This active cooling system has never been tested at the extreme angles Flight 10 will attempt. If it works, SpaceX proves they can land starships on any planet with an atmosphere. If it fails, well, that's why they're using a $63 million test vehicle instead of risking a mission-critical booster. Here's the twist that even shocks SpaceX insiders. Flight 10 data isn't just for current starships. It's laying the groundwork for Starship Block 3, which will be so massive it breaks the laws of rocket design as we know them. Elon Musk recently hinted that Block 3 might increase in diameter, not just height. We're potentially looking at a 12-meter-wide monster with 42 Raptor 3 engines producing 11,760 tons of thrust. That's three times more powerful than the Saturn Fuim that took us to the moon. The landing techniques being tested with Booster 16 Sacrifice will scale directly to these future giants. You can't just make rockets bigger without understanding how they behave during atmospheric entry. Flight 10 is essentially a $63 million computer simulation running at full scale. There's also a classified element to this test that SpaceX won't discuss publicly. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy recently announced plans to deploy nuclear reactors on the moon by 2030. These aren't small devices. We're talking about 100 kilowatt power systems that weigh tons. Landing nuclear reactors requires precision that current technology can't guarantee. The steep angle approach being tested in Flight 10 could be the key to delivering nuclear infrastructure safely to lunar surface. This isn't just about SpaceX's commercial success. It's about America's strategic dominance in space. But here's what keeps SpaceX engineers awake at night. What if Flight 10 reveals fundamental problems with their approach? What if the Raptor 3 engines can't handle the stress? What if the active cooling system fails catastrophically? Unlike previous tests, there's no backup plan for Flight 10. If the steep angle approach proves impossible, SpaceX will have to redesign their entire Mars mission architecture. The Artemis 3 timeline could slip. The lunar base program might need completely different landing systems. This is why SpaceX engineers were shocked by the decision. They're betting the entire future of interplanetary travel on a single $63 million test. It's either the boldest engineering decision in aerospace history or the most expensive mistake SpaceX has ever made. As Booster 16 sits in the rocket garden at Starbase, fully assembled and ready for sacrifice, SpaceX engineers are running final simulations. Every sensor has been calibrated. Every data stream has been tested. When Flight 10 launches, hundreds of engineers will hold their breath as $63 million of hardware intentionally destroys itself in the name of science. The data collected in those final moments before impact will influence every Starship flight for the next decade. It will determine whether humans can reliably land on Mars. It will shape the future of lunar exploration. It will either validate SpaceX's revolutionary approach to atmospheric entry, or send them back to the drawing board. But here's the most shocking part. SpaceX is so confident in this test that they've already started building Block 3 hardware 
based on the assumption that Flight 10 will succeed. So there you have it. SpaceX isn't just throwing away $63 million. They're investing in humanity's future among the stars. This single test will determine whether we can reliably land on Mars, whether America dominates lunar exploration, and whether Starship Block 3 becomes the most powerful rocket ever built. But here's what I find most incredible. While other companies play it safe with small incremental improvements, SpaceX is literally betting the future of space exploration on one bold test. That's the difference between dreaming about Mars and actually getting there. The real question isn't whether Flight 10 will succeed or fail, it's whether we're witnessing the birth of true interplanetary civilization. Because if SpaceX cracks this code, everything changes. Mars isn't just a distant dream anymore. It becomes our second home. What do you think? Is sacrificing $63 million worth unlocking the secrets of Mars colonization? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to stay updated on SpaceX's journey to make humanity multiplanetary, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't want to miss what comes next. The countdown to our multiplanetary future has already begun. SpaceX engineers are in panic mode. Ship 37's engine just passed a perfect test. Then mysterious sensor data revealed something so dangerous, they're tearing apart the entire launch pad at 12.30 a.m. We're talking emergency midnight engine swaps and potentially catastrophic flight delays. But here's the terrifying part. What if this same hidden flaw exists in every starship? Let's dive right in. Let's rewind to August 1st, 2.30 p.m. Central Time. Ship 37 sits on the test stand, all six Raptor engines roaring to life in what everyone thinks is picture-perfect harmony. For 40 seconds, those engines pump out a combined 1.2 million pounds of thrust, enough to power a small city. No visible flames, no explosions, no drama. SpaceX engineers are high-fiving. Elon tweets his confidence. The world thinks Ship 37 just aced its final exam. But here's what nobody knew. While human eyes saw perfection, thousands of sensors were screaming warnings that would make your blood run cold. Picture this. Every millisecond during that test, Ship 37's engines were generating 50,000 data points. Temperature readings, pressure fluctuations, vibration patterns, fuel flow rates. It's like having 50,000 doctors monitoring your heartbeat simultaneously. And buried in that mountain of data was a death sentence waiting to happen. The Vacuum Raptor engine, the one designed to operate in the deadly void of space, was showing microscopic pressure anomalies lasting just 0.003 seconds. To put that in perspective, you blink your eyes 100 times longer than these anomalies lasted. But in rocket engine terms, those tiny fluctuations were like finding cancer cells in a blood test. Here's why this is absolutely terrifying. Vacuum Raptor engines use regenerative cooling. Imagine trying to cool a blowtorch by running liquid nitrogen through hair-thin channels carved inside the metal. These channels are smaller than human veins, and if even one develops a microcrack, the entire engine becomes a 500,000-pound thrust bomb waiting to explode. Fast forward to August 5th, 12.30 a.m. While most of Starbase sleeps, emergency crews are frantically working under floodlights. They're not just swapping an engine, they're performing emergency surgery on the most complex machine ever built by humans. But here's where this story gets absolutely insane. SpaceX didn't just swap the engine. They completely rebuilt the entire test infrastructure they had just torn down 48 hours earlier. We're talking about moving 20-ton ring walls, reinstalling 15 precision hold-down clamps, and recalibrating systems that take teams of engineers hours to perfect. Why would they go through this massive undertaking for just one engine swap? Because they discovered something that could destroy not just Ship 37, but potentially the entire Starship program. Here's what likely shocked those engineers into emergency mode. The sensor data revealed that the cooling channels in the Vacuum Raptor weren't just showing anomalies. They were showing signs of systematic failure that could affect every Vacuum Raptor engine ever built. Think about it like this. 
If you discovered a design flaw in one pacemaker, you'd immediately recall every pacemaker made with the same design. But SpaceX can't recall engines already installed in ships 38, 39, and beyond. They can only prevent a catastrophe by catching it now. The vacuum raptor operates at 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt copper instantly. In space, there's no atmosphere to help cool the engine. If those cooling channels fail, the engine doesn't just shut down, it explodes with the force of several tons of TNT. And that explosion could trigger a cascade failure, destroying adjacent engines and potentially the entire vehicle. But there's an even more terrifying possibility lurking beneath the surface. What if this flaw exists in every vacuum Raptor engine SpaceX has ever built? What if Ship 37's engine was just the first to show symptoms of a systematic design issue? Consider this nightmare scenario. Ship 37 launches successfully, reaches space, and then suffers catastrophic engine failure during its space phase. The explosion doesn't just destroy Ship 37. It creates thousands of pieces of debris in orbit, potentially triggering Kessler syndrome and making space inaccessible for decades. That's not just a SpaceX problem. That's a humanity problem, and it explains why SpaceX engineers were working at midnight to completely rebuild their test infrastructure. Here's where the stakes become astronomical. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson recently confirmed that Starship AHLS must be ready for Artemis III, America's return to the moon. Every day of delay potentially hands China the advantage in the new space race, but imagine being the engineer who has to sign off on an engine that could potentially explode in space. The pressure is crushing, literally the weight of human space exploration on your shoulders. One wrong decision doesn't just delay a mission. It could end America's lunar ambitions and hand space supremacy to China. This explains SpaceX's unprecedented response. They're not just fixing an engine. They're potentially saving the entire Western space program. Here's what makes this situation uniquely terrifying. Vacuum Raptor engines aren't just bigger versions of sea-level Raptors. They're completely different beasts operating at the absolute limits of physics. A sea-level raptor operates at about 300 bar of pressure. That's like having 4,400 pounds pressing on every square inch. But a vacuum raptor's cooling system operates at even higher pressures while dealing with the thermal shock of going from 6,000 degrees.